Hi guys, hope you've all well. Uh, today we're just going to have a little play with some something a bit different really. Um, I have these and the I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm going to say F colour by F core. They're a low melt. Um, the word's gone. Enamel. They're a low melt enamel. Oh, it's going to be one of them days, guys. I've not even started and I can't remember things. So, these are the only colours I have. That one's getting a bit low. Uh, and I generally use these with copper on uh, sheet copper pendants and stuff to just add a bit of something um, and I've never tried it on clay and I just thought in my little delve into using different materials on clay I'd give them a go now I did have a little Google uh, well Google I had a little search on YouTube to see if any other polymer clay artists had used them and I found one video by the lovely uh, Elena, Elena, um, is it Elena's Clay Corner, I think it is. And she's done um, just a, a little stenciled pendant with some similar, uh, well, some, some of these sort of enamels. Um, so yeah, go and check that out, guys. Um, she does some lovely stuff, doesn't she? Um, so I'm just going to do two really simple pendants with it um, and I'm going to use, hang on let me just put, I'm only going to use these uh, kind of patinery greeny blues, I'm not going to use any black or white on this one um, and I'm going to use some copper clay, now unfortunately I seem to have run out of my Cernit Copper which you know is my favourite so what I'm going to do is I've got some Glamour Copper which is more of a pearlescent and I've also got this which is actually bronze but it looks very coppery so I'm just going to mix them to get a, an aged copper look if you've got copper colour clay guys of course just use copper colour clay I'm just going to use these bits up and of course it doesn't matter what colour you use use whatever colour you want uh, these are I will leave a link to the shop for these you may have to then search within your own country um, but they, they are really cool things to use um, on, on, me on metals um, so I'm assuming we're going to get similar effects on the uh, clay and it does say 150 on them uh, but they melt a lot lower than that um, I have a melt pot um, and I just put my pieces of metal in the melt pot with a little bit of this on and it melts around 120 for me in the melt pot so it's totally fine in the oven you don't have to put your temperatures up right sure up Kath you're babbling on so uh, I'll go and condition some clay I've got a stencil out I'm just going to use this one um, this is a Marianne stencil again I'll leave um, the stencil in the description if you like it I've just dug out a couple of my happy hands cutters so I'm just probably going to do a circle and a square today and that's all we need really guys um, just some clay some enamel you could probably do this by stippling paint if you haven't got any enamel but want to get the same effect maybe just stipple a little bit of paint through or a little bit of liquid clay mixed with uh, mica powders or your pastels you know there's all I always try and give you a workaround don't I if you haven't got the same stuff as me so just have a dabble see what you've got right I'll go and get some of this clay conditioned again not doing a great deal guy guys just enough for a couple of pendants uh, and I may take it up a notch in another video uh, but I just want to keep it simple for this video just so you can see how to work with it so I'll see you in a sec bye 
Hi guys, okay, so I've got two pieces of clay, one big enough for each of my cutters, um, and I've put some more through, they're on a zero by the way guys, and I've put some more through uh, just to put, so I've got a backing on the pendant. Um, so yes, let's give these a little burnish. Uh, just to make sure that they're nice and smooth on top before we put the stencil on I've got a little bit of a ripple from my pasta machine so I just want to make sure that that's um, buffed out there we go same on this one There, that'll do. Okie dokie. I'm going to bring the stencil in. I think I'll do the circle one first. I'll just put that square to one side. And I'm working on a bit of paper, guys, because this is uh, quite a fine dust. So uh, if you're at all concerned, put a face mask on. It's a bit like working with um, embossing powders, I suppose. Uh, and I'm just going to position my stencil. Um, I think I'll do it kind of with the centre off centre so I'm just going to pop it up there and I'm just going to smooth the stencil down to make sure it's stuck but I am going to just roll over the top to put a little bit of an impression in um, this actually reminds me remember the first video I ever did I kind of did this with uh, mica powders, didn't I? Um, but of course we're using enamel today. So I'm just giving it a light roll, not a great deal of pressure. Just so that I know that that stencil is bonded in. You can just see a little bit there where it hasn't. Um, so we just get a little bit of relief really. That, and that's what the um, the uh, what's it whatever it's called enamel why can't that word stay in my head that's what the enamel is going to uh, I've just got a couple of crumbs off my roller guys I'm just just going to burnish them away with my finger they get over pressed and it oozed it out the sides a bit okay so I'm just going to get the tops off these which are a bit tricky for me because they're very tight oh and I've spilt it already and these things I've had the turquoises and the black uh, for quite a while guys and a little goes a really long way uh, you just have to be careful because it all collects in the lid when you take the top off and tapping it doesn't seem to work very well but I will try it on this one. Oh, come out there we go so yeah I'm gonna use these greens I think it's green petrol blue and turquoise uh, just to give me a little bit of banding uh, and I'm just going to use my finger guys because uh, it, it sticks really well to your finger so you can just burnish it in in spots wherever you want it I like to um, on, on um, copper I would just pour it on uh, and not really worry about it but on the clay I like to make sure that it's burnished in a little bit first and then you could sprinkle if you want to but you don't really want any excess either let's put a bit of this paler one on now just gonna dip my finger in the pot and get that burnished in 
and then once I'm burnished in and I know it's definitely stuck to the clay I'll put a little bit more over the top just patting it in with my finger so yeah you could have a you know a very subtle effect with this guys if you so wished um, you can get it really speckly as well if you just put a tiny bit on but I quite uh, I quite like it in just a thin coat it does look more patina like in a thin coat again depends what look you want to go for guys okay let's just go back over with a couple of these darker colours now and blend them in just a little bit just so it's um, it's not flat does that make sense it's not all one colour and we've got a bit of shading and things with the different colours and of course when you rub with your finger it blends the other colours as well so you get a, a bit of an ombre between the shades I think I'll just put a tiny bit of green down here just to darken that end up maybe just a touch more there we go so I'm just going to put this to one side uh, and tap it over my bin uh, just to get the excess off before we take the stencil off okay guys and now for the reveal just really gently pull your stencil off so that's going to be our circle and I'll just give me stencil the dust then I know there's an untracked underneath <clears throat> and then for the square one I think I'm just going to do it coming across rather than it having a center on like the circle I'm just going to do rays of it uh, coming down sorry I've got a bit of fluff on that so I think I'll just pop that here again make sure it's stuck down and it's not sliding around and then I'll just give it a little roll with my roller again just to embed that stencil into the clay again just light pressure guys you can see it just start to bulge up um, you don't want to press too hard because I did on one corner didn't I and it oozes the clay out okay and on this one I think I might do stripes um, and blend them in between um, I'm just going to use what's on my desk as well waste not want not and like I said these go a long way so I think I'll do light down the middle first um, I will tell you the colours of these in the descriptions guys this pale one, I'm just looking at the label, this pale one is turquoise. Let's pat that in. Make sure it's bonded with the clay. And I'm just making sure it goes over into that next bit of the pattern so that I can blend it through okay let's go in with this this color is also turquoise oh light turquoise and dark turquoise that's what it is so I've got a light and a dark turquoise but these two turquoises were the first colours I ever bought 
and they look so lovely on sheet copper. And let's just get that blended down that band. Oh, look, it's down my finger. And then I'll put this green on the other side and I may just put a touch of turquoise in with this green just to blue it up a little bit. Blend that through. And I'll just put a little bit of light turquoise with it. Can you see it just knocks it back a bit, takes that green off. turquoise now to blend by just adding a little bit more over the top of the other colours. Oh I think that should look quite cool guys, what do you think? I may just put a little bit of dark on this end, just blend it up a bit so there's just a speckle of it. Okay, I think that's enough. I'll just tap this over my bin, guys, to get rid of the excess. I find it easier doing that because you know I'm not very good with crumbs. Um, I don't like things feeling gritty on my hands. It's one of them weird things I've got. I can't be the only person in the world who doesn't like it, can I? Right, let's get rid of that dust, then it's not interfering with anything we're doing. Let's get this peeled off. Come on. I hadn't quite stuck it down to the paper. Oh, that's going to look cool. Okay. I'll just pop my stencil to one side. Now then, I better clean my hands up, haven't I? We need to get these uh, onto some backing clay and cut them out. I should have maybe done that first, shouldn't I? But you know me. The light bulb comes on halfway through doing it. That I could have done it a better way. There, hands are clean. Desks clean. Let's get these onto some backing clay. I'll do the circle one first. Because it's getting this peeled off first. And I'll just hold it in that corner then. I know it's uh, not going to get a fingerprint on. And my clay is quite soft, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My clay is quite soft, so um, I'm, I know it'll bond quite nicely with just a tiny bit of pressure. Um, if you're at all concerned, obviously do your backing first or put a little bit of liquid clay on. Uh, that's the square one, Kath, not the round one. Okay. Let's get a nice section of these colours. And I'm just going to cut it on this mat, guys. And then I'll take them off with my knife rather than... Um, I just don't want to touch them too much, if that makes sense. And these Happy Hands cutters are really good with a nice edge so I shouldn't have too many crumbs to worry about great there we go so that's that one and I'll just pick my circle one up again just be really careful not to overstretch it let's get this popped here tiny bit of pressure to make sure it's 
down to the clay and let's get my circle cutter I've got two of these, one's a bit bigger and I'll be blowed if I can remember where I've put it it might be in the kitchen because I took some bits in to wash so I may have just left it on the side so I'm just going to I'm going to pop this reasonably close to the edge or shall I do it a bit further over? no, I'll have it close to the edge off you pop and this, you could do something with these scraps couldn't you? you could um, that's why I cut it as small as I did then I wouldn't have too much waste really guys um, it's a pity these pieces aren't a little bit bigger actually I could have cut a earring out couldn't I so that's them Let me just clean that edge up with my nail before I get it off and there's not much um, dust down the side of the pendants although I think that would add rather than take away and I'm going to dome them I think guys if I can find the other egg poacher that is just give them a little wipe a bit dusty let's get these off this back in And I'm not going to overly worry about crumbs, guys. I can catch the edges. Uh, I just want to do my best not to disturb the um, enamel powder. Although it's pretty firmly pressed in now. I'll just give that a little hand to droop. Well, I'll get me other one off. I do like these texture mats um, for backing. You get such a lovely, neat pattern on the back, don't you? And that one's quite crummy as well, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's because I cut it out on the mat. And let's just give this a little helping hand. Okay, just get a piece of paper and just get that to bend over. I don't want a massive curve on them, guys. It's just if they've got that little bit of a bend in them, a little bit of a dome in them, it just makes them look a little bit something more doesn't it, like you've put a bit more thought into it and it doesn't want to stick so I'm just going to let that drape and do what it wants and I'll probably do the same with this one, I really don't think it's going to stick down but if I can just get it to go a little bit I'll just have a nice gentle curve on it. I'll just wipe that edge, clean it up a little bit while it's sat nice on there. And it really hasn't dragged a lot of the powder down through the sides, so that's a good thing, isn't it? Because it's uh, spoils the look of your pendant sometimes and you've got to do loads of sanding to get rid of that okay I think these are good to go guys I'm going to pop them in just normal temperature normal time um, and they bit they'll bake fine um, I must they don't really unless you put loads on they don't really run run um, but we might get a little bit but again it'll add to the effect so I'm not going to worry I'll go and pop these in the oven and I'll see you all when they're done see you in a minute 
Hi guys, we're at the oven. So here's the circle one. And here's the square one. Oh. And all I've done is um I just took the burrs off with just a little nail file and I've gone over with my Dremel polishing head just to put a bit of a sheen on the copper behind. So you know you could leave it matte if you wanted um, or you can buff it up um, and this just won't budge it is well and truly stuck and this was a ball I put in to bake just to show you that you know unless you absolutely gouge your nail in uh, it's not coming off it's truly bonded uh, so you don't have to worry about putting um, a varnish or a resin or whatever on top I'm not going to do anything with these guys because they're just sample pieces I will probably follow up with a little video making something a little bit more involved using the enamels um, so keep your eyes open for that and I shall leave it there guys see you later bye